Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I've got my May favorites of the month. So I'm going to be sharing the products that I've been loving for the past couple of weeks. And I've got some stuff that I'm really excited about. I have a nice mix between makeup, skincare, and hair care. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So I did want to mention that I did film this hair tutorial actually for my IGTV. I don't do a lot of hair tutorials over there. I do a lot of makeup, but I'm trying to branch out, switch it up a bit. So if you want to see how I got these wavy curls in less than 10 minutes, probably more like five minutes on my naturally straight hair. That video is gonna be coming to my IGTV. Oh, and I have a fail in this video. So I have my favorites and fails, but not every month I have like a major fail, but I do have one fail this month. So we'll save that for the end. So let's go ahead and start off with a favorite. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette. So I recently picked up the Mini Glam and the Mini Retro and I, honestly thought about including the mini retro as a favorite as well because kind of they both are but I was like you know what pick one that's your tippy top favorite and for me I just see myself using this one so consistently I just think this makes such a beautiful simple everyday palette you can get a pretty wide range of looks with this even though it is only five shades I've done some simple matte looks with this where I just use these two shades right here or I've done something a little bit more glam using all five or you could just tap one of these shimmers onto the lid, put one of the browns in the crease or use your bronzer to have a really simple everyday look. And even though it's only five shades and they are kind of all in this neutral color family, I still feel like I've made a nice range of looks with this. The formula has been so easy to use as well. I've mentioned a couple times that the first look that I did with this, I picked up so much of this dark brown that I remember thinking this look is not gonna blend out. I might have to wipe it off and start over on the eyes, but I just sat there and continued to buff it into the skin and it blended out seamlessly. So I've been really impressed with the way that this blends out. I think it's very easy to work with. And these shimmers just look so foiled, so glittery. And I feel like they're dimensional in a way that other shimmer shadows aren't. So even while the color story is nothing that unique, I feel like the shades, especially these shimmery ones, have a really cool dimensional finish to them. And I don't think $25 is bad. I mean, yeah, it's a tiny palette and it was even smaller than I was anticipating once I got it, but I've been loving this. All right, so you guys know I usually mention technique favorites, so I have a couple of those that I wanna sprinkle throughout the video. The first one has been a one shadow look. So I like doing this with matte shades or shimmer shades, neutral shades, colorful shades. I especially love this technique when I'm using like lighter pastel shades. So I did a look, I think it was yesterday's video or the video before that, where I just took a pastel like lilac purple shade just buffed it into the crease and blended it up into the lid. I said that backwards. Place it on the lid and then buffed it into the crease a little bit. One shadow does not take long, but still looks really put together and cool. Another makeup favorite is surprisingly a duochrome highlighter. So if you guys follow along with my Shot My Stash series, you know that this rotation is fantasy self themed. So I did a video a couple weeks back talking about like my fantasy self products, products that I always keep thinking, you know, one day I'm going to have a use for that. It's a really cool, unique product, but they're items I don't use that frequently. So I've been trying to encourage myself to use them more, and I've actually fallen in love with a few of them. The first one being this duochrome highlighter. So the shade is called Space Baby. This is from Ofra. This is not new. This was a collab with Nikki Tutorials a while back, and this palette that I'm holding is actually a full palette with three highlighters but for me that shade that i'm loving right now is space baby so here's what it looks like on my hand and you think like wow this is really intense this is not necessarily an everyday highlighter and i thought that at first as well but the more that i wear it the more i realize you can kind of make it work for every day I even have on a dual chrome highlighter today. It's not the same one. It's Prismatic Amethyst from Becca mixed with a Star Island from this palette as well. But I think when you really buff it into the skin and don't apply it too, too heavy, you can make a dual chrome highlighter look really cool for every day. And this one, I feel like just adds such a nice finish to the cheeks. I was wearing it in, what video was it? my Sephora video where I used fake spot to look up some of the Sephora ratings and found some 
interesting stuff. But in that video, I had that highlighter on and I got a comment from someone saying that she liked my highlighter so much that she went to the description box to see what it was and she was so surprised to hear that it was Space Baby because she had thought before that, you know, a duochrome highlighter like that wouldn't necessarily work for every day. And surprisingly, I feel like it looks pretty cool for every day. I mean, yeah, it has a subtle blue undertone and you're wearing a duochrome highlighter, but I do think it's fun. And I think if you really buff it into the skin, it can look a little bit more on the subtle side. All right, kind of a throwback makeup favorite. This is not a new item for me, but I've been reaching for it a lot. And that is this lip gloss from Milani. This is the shade Soft Rose. So I mentioned this formula a while ago in a dupes video. I think these are very similar to the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine lip glosses, the cream formula. And not only do I like this formula a lot, but also this color has kind of been my go-to when I don't know what to pair with a look. So sometimes when I have on more of a cool toned eye or I'm wearing this kind of fun duochrome highlighter and I don't necessarily want to wear like a warm nude lip gloss or lipstick or liquid lipstick, whatever, this has been what I've been reaching for. So I've actually worn this a lot. It was in my last shot, my stash rotation, and I would say more than 50% of the time, this was the lip color that I was pairing. I feel like it's just so simple and goes with any look. And if you apply a lot of this, you get a little bit more of that pigment, or you can just kind of tap it over the lips and kind of buff it in with your finger and you get something a little bit more sheer that still has that shine. So if you're looking for a good drugstore lip gloss formula, I really like this one. And this shade I think is a good option. The more I look at this, I'm like, I wonder if this is a dupe for one of my Persona glosses. This is the gloss shade in pink. Let's try it. Uh, it's a little bit more nude than pink. Pink is on the bottom. Let's try Shortcake. Maybe it matches that. Okay, so here is Shortcake right here. Definitely not the exact same, but similar. The formulas are different though. I think this Milani one has a little bit more opacity to it and it kind of has that tingly feeling, which I don't always like but i've really been loving this and like i said more than half the time this was the lip that i was pairing my eyeshadow looks with all right i've got some skincare favorites so first of all you guys know i love sunscreen okay i do want to mention we just got a bird feeder and it has been very popular i feel like we are constantly refilling it with bird seed because it will go down so quickly and there are always birds out there so you're probably hearing them in my video but I also kind of like it. I think it adds a little ambiance. So enjoy the birds. And let's talk about this sunscreen. So you guys know sunscreen is very important. I talk about it a lot and I try to wear it. No, I don't try. I do wear it every single day, winter, summer, whether I'm only going to be inside, you know, the rays can still penetrate through your windows. So sunscreen is really important to me and I love finding good ones. So this is the new one from First Aid Beauty. It's their weightless liquid mineral sunscreen. So I did an in-depth review on this when I did my new product ranking video. I'll leave that link down below if you want to hear some further thoughts. But this is a tinted sunscreen, but I feel like this formula is a good option for people that usually struggle to find good facial sunscreens because the formula is not as sticky or heavy or oily as most facial sunscreens and I kind of almost like the tint to it because it gives my skin a very sheer coverage look. I mean it's very very sheer but if you're just out and about running errands and you're not really applying makeup you can still get a little bit of perfecting from your sunscreen. I did mention in my other review video though that I wish they would come out with like maybe two or three versions of the tint. Because it is sheer, I think it's very flexible to work for a lot of skin tones, but I still wish they had a couple of other options. But this is SPF 30, it's a zinc oxide sunscreen, so it is reef safe. Also, I feel like it wears really well underneath makeup. If you struggle to find, found not foundations, but to find sunscreens that work with your foundation, I think you will like this one. I definitely see myself using this a lot in the summer, especially for my days, like I said, where I'm not planning to wear makeup, but I kind of want this to even out my skin a little bit, just a little bit. I don't want to like build up your expectations too much to think it's a foundation because it's not, 
but it just gives a nice sheer wash of color. So next we have another skincare item. This is kind of a throwback skincare item for me. I purchased this back in the fall and it has been a staple in my routine for a while. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in my drugstore skincare favorites video, but I realized I had not mentioned it in a favorites video. And especially these days, I've been kind of indulging in face masks and just enjoying that part of my routine and I've been using this even more. You don't wanna use it too much, but I've enjoyed using it. So this is the Ordinary AHA 30% plus BHA 2% peeling solution. So like I said, you don't wanna use it too much once a week maximum and only for about 10 minutes. It is a very powerful product. It does tingle like the slightest amount, but if it does start to feel painful, I would take it off, you know, definitely build up a tolerance to it. But because this has such a high concentration of AHA, it, it does such a good job exfoliating your skin. So the nights that I use this, the next day I feel like my texture is minimized a lot and my skin is just a lot smoother. Makeup sits better on top of it. You guys know I struggle with bumps on my skin, little closed comedones. I think this is great for that. This is also good for acne. Again, you don't want to use it too frequently. Don't make this an every night product and definitely don't exceed that 10 minute mark. But with consistent use, I feel like this really helps the texture of my skin, helps everything look very even. And again, makeup applies so much better on top of it. That's one thing I love about good skincare. It makes your makeup look even better. You know, when you're properly prepping the skin and taking care of it, your makeup just sits better on top of it. So that's why skincare is so important to me. I mean, that's not the only reason. It's not just for makeup. It's also important to take care of yourself, your body and your skin, but I think that's a nice bonus. So one final favorite before we mention the fail is a hair product. So Eva NYC is quickly becoming one of my favorite hair care brands and this is their Shape Shifter Texturizing Hairspray. Now I have to say, I tried their other hairspray in the past, the Hold Me Tight Hairspray, and didn't like that one. So I do want to mention that. That one I found didn't give me as much hold as I wanted, but it still left my hair kind of crunchy and I just didn't love the combination. But this one is perfect for styles kind of like I have today that are a little bit more messy. I want a little bit of volume. It is more of a texturizing hairspray, so it doesn't leave your hair feeling crunchy the way some hairsprays do, but it almost leaves your hair feeling dry. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean in a similar sense that a texturizing spray would where it almost gives it like a little grit, kind of like a dry shampoo might give you kind of that powdery sensation at the roots. This kind of just gives the hair a little bit of hold and texture. Also, the smell is amazing. I think it smells like vanilla. I'm trying to see if it says anywhere what the scent technically is. I think it smells like vanilla. But I've also been wearing this on days that my hair isn't necessarily in like a messy undone style like it is today. But I've also been wearing this on the days that I do my heatless robe curls that I've shared with you guys before. And for that, I still like the hold that this gives. That's a little more touchable and it doesn't make my hair crispy. Now, this isn't like the most hold hairspray ever. For me, you guys, you know I've mentioned it many times. That is the Kenra hairspray. That's the best hairspray I've ever tried in terms of extending the wear of your style. But this, I just love the texture that it gives my hair. I love that it gives me a hold that's a little bit softer, but it still stays in place and it maintains the style. All right, before we mention the fail of the month, let's talk about my other technique favorite, so mixing foundation with a primer is nothing new, but for me in the past, when I would mix the primer and a foundation, I was usually mixing like a glowy primer or a moisturizing primer. But this month I tried something a little bit different. I took a pore filling slash smoothing primer and mixed that with my foundation. Absolutely amazing result. So if you haven't tried this, I recommend it. The combo that I've really been enjoying is my Peach Perfect foundation, which is already quite smoothing. But when I mix these together, it's on another level. And the primer that I've been mixing it with is the Pores Be Gone from First Aid Beauty. So these are both a little bit pricier products. It doesn't have to be these exact two. Just use whatever foundation you have. And if you have a more smoothing primer, try mixing it in. Something like this, something like the High Adherence from First Aid, no, not First Aid Beauty, from The Ordinary, or like the All Nighter Primer from, why do I keep wanting to say First Aid Beauty? From Urban Decay. 
take a little bit of that on the back of your hand with your foundation. It's going to sheer out the coverage just a little bit because you have a ratio with a little bit less pigment in it, but I feel like it just perfects the skin so much. And if you have a foundation that maybe emphasizes pores or texture and you want it to look a little more smooth on the skin, try mixing this in. Don't do it first and then do your foundation on top. Mix them together, make a little concoction, and then apply that. I've really been loving it. But it's time for the fail of the month. Now this is not a major fail, it's just a product that I don't really recommend and I don't really think is worth it. So you guys saw this again in my ranking video where I did a ranking of five new products I tried recently. Again, I'll have it linked below, but in that video, this came in last place. Nothing like severely wrong with it, but I don't think you need it. So this is from Bite Beauty and they call this their Line and Define Lip Primer. For me, this is a lip balm. And if you already have a lip balm in your collection, preferably one that's not $22, it's gonna do the exact same thing. This adds a little bit of hydration to the lips. So naturally a lipstick is gonna sit a little bit better, but I don't find it to do anything different than a lip balm would. So for me, I don't feel like this is an investment that's worth it. I think if you're gonna spend this price on a lip product from Bite, buy one of their crayons that are in the same packaging that are their actual lipsticks. That formula is fantastic. So I think if you were looking for something, I would recommend those over this. For me, this wasn't a bad product, but I don't think it's something that's necessary in my routine, and I don't really recommend something like this. But that's gonna go ahead and complete my May favorites of the month. I would love to hear from you guys down below. First of all, if you've tried any of these products, what do you think? Do you love them as much as I do? Or if you have any favorites from the month, whether it was skin, makeup, hair, television, food, whatever it is, let us know down below what you have been loving. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll go ahead and see you in my next video. Bye.